Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Okay. Right before this, uh, I had a pumpkin sitting on my desk that I carved, and I I got in here this morning, like right before this, and I was like, oh, my pumpkin is at a spectacular death. <laughs> I gotta oh. throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I can just uh, jump around in terms of uh, different roles before getting to questions about riding. Sure. <laughs> what was the, how'd you get involved in that short film about like pomegranates and stuff? New, new beginnings? Oh gosh. Oh no, that's a, that was a project uh, my ex-boyfriend and our friend uh, wanted to make a short movie. Uh, he had, the, our friend had the idea, so we made this short movie together. Okay. <laughs> that was really all it was. <laughs> yeah, because I noticed that nobody had ever asked you about that before, so I was curious. Oh, yeah, no, it, but it was like, but our friend put it on IMDb, so, like, I had a credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so were you already uh, in, in L.A. at that time, or no? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I had already moved to L.A. because I moved to L.A. to go to grad school. Yeah. So I, I came out here and I went to Cal Arts, which is in Valencia, just, you know, like 20, 30 miles north of where I live in L.A. And uh, I got my MFA in acting there. And then I just decided to stay around in L.A. after after leaving grad school. So that's I, I mean, I've been here ever since. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what was your uh, like first professional or paid acting role? Ah, so uh, my first like big professional role was coming right out of coming right out of grad school. I uh, was cast in a production of Medea, okay. uh, in, in Greek tragedy, uh, that was put on at UCLA. Uh, UCLA had this producing arm called UCLA Live, and uh, it was their first in-house production. So usually they brought in like touring companies, and this was their first like, you know, just like done by the school. So it was a joint production between UCLA and Cal Arts, and. Uh, I was in the Greek chorus of this play starring Annette Benning. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, like starring Annette Benning, and she was wonderful. And uh, it was my first professional show, and it was it got me my equity card right off the bat. Uh, Actors' Equity is the uh, union for uh, actors who do theater. Right. Um, and uh, that was really cool. And then I realized that student loans are, are, are going to kick in. So <laughs> I went and got a whole different career to pay off my, my bills while uh, doing theater and taking voiceover classes and, you know, starting my acting career slowly on the side. And is there a separate story of how you got into SAG then? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't get into SAG until, until last year, until 2020. Oh, okay. So that's not, uh, as far as like... Uh, on camera work, quote unquote. I was non-union for a really long time, just like slowly building my credits. I think my first like anime, like my first voice, my first like voiceover role that I got paid for was a video game, uh, MMORPG called um, Dungeon Fighter Online. Okay. Uh, it was this Korean game, but I did like the English dub for it. Uh, but that was like in 2012, I think, uh, <laughs> or 2011. So, you know, I've just been like slowly, slowly working my way up. And then in 2020, no, in 2019, I got cast in um, Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, doing additional voices. And that got me, uh, that made me SAG eligible. And then it wasn't until 2020 when I did a uh, brand new animal, BNA, uh, that anime on Netflix that, uh, that flipped me. So I was forced to join the, I was forced to join the union at that point. Okay. Yeah. And was your initial goal to try and pursue uh on camera acting opposed to anything else or uh yeah I, I think so like uh you know like theater was like my first love and then like on camera acting you know tv film that's what la is most known for so you know i, I was stuck out here for that it wasn't going like super great but you know i it was also working a full-time job the whole time just trying to do what i could in the spaces in between you know, and then voiceover had always been something that I'd been interested in, like kind of in the back of my mind. And it wasn't until I started, I left CalArts that I was like, oh, I should really start thinking about it. And then took a few classes, cut a reel, and then, you know, tried to, try to do things here and there, you know, whenever I could. Uh, but it took me, it took me a while. And it wasn't until I left my, it wasn't until I left my other career that um, I was able to really focus on acting. And then stuff started to really just like 
come together. You know, I got my agent, Jujutsu Kaisen, da 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 Right. Right and Shogun. <laughs> so was your first uh, more bigger role in anime uh, playing Hiromi Shirahane? Yeah, it was one of my bigger roles. Yeah. Um, so I was I was doing a lot of work with Splice Bread, uh, which uh, and, and SDI, uh, and they do a lot of the Netflix anime. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, Kuro Mukuro was definitely like my first my first good supporting role. Uh, I, I, for a long time, I was mostly just playing moms, which was fun. But I was like, I like it. Just in my twenties, playing moms. Yeah. But I guess I have mom energy. <laughs> <laughs> and how were your what were your thoughts on stepping into the role of Hiromi then? Oh, it was fun. What I liked about Hiromi is that she's she's obviously like a um, she's a no nonsense woman, and she's in charge. I mean, like she's in charge. She's like the woman in charge at the UN. But um, she's also got these great comedic moments. Mm. Uh, just like the way the way she just freaks out about our daughter it's just it's really fun so being able to play those two modes uh was really fun for that series mm. next one would have been uh amanza and id zero oh yeah amanza and id zero yeah she was cool because she was just like this badass right and i was like oh i get to play like the sexy girl <laughs> <laughs> i was like that's cool <laughs> That was a fun show. I when we were recording it, I was like, I don't understand what's happening the entire mm-hmm. time. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably obvious to ask too, but do you have a preference for playing more um, serious roles opposed to comedic roles for anime? Um, no, I like doing both. I think uh, they're like they're, they're both fun in their own way obviously like comedic roles like I, I feel like they fit like a glove for me and and this is it's oh, it's always fun to ham it up but when I can do a serious role and like really like dig into like the meat of it that's where like the actor in me is like yes I feel fed I feel nourished thoughts on because uh, I think you're the first person I've talked to who was in Devil Man Cry Baby oh yeah uh yeah, that was another show where, like, I just, they had me come in and play a mom, and I was like, okay, I'm just playing a mom, and I didn't really know much about the, sh- I didn't know anything about the the manga or the previous, you know, anime uh, walking in, and when you're doing anime, like, you only see what you're in, so, like, if you're, a, if you're a side character, you will not know large swaths of what's happening, and so same for my character, and I was like, okay, this is mom, something's weird with the sun, and then all of a sudden it jumps to later in the series I was like oh oh no this is what's happening yeah uh so yeah that was a an interesting show to work on (laughs) would sometime after that would have been or around the same time would have been the the Violet Evergarden series oh my gosh Violet Evergarden I I mean like I'm such a fan of it in general too because like I watched it uh when it came out um but god it's it's one of the most beautiful anime I've ever seen. Like, character yeah. animation is just, ah, uh, they're so good. You know, getting to play a few, getting to play a few, like, bit characters in that universe was really, really fun. And as far as that, like, you asked me about, like, do I like comedic or do I like dramatic? Like, there was one, there was one side character that I did who had, like, this, like, emotional breakdown. And I felt like that was fun because she was also very funny. But then she could have, like, kind of, like, this uh, heartfelt, heartfelt moment and i was like oh i get to have a little bit of both so that mm-hmm. was nice that was with the uh, yours in the movie right oh yeah and then, and then well that's yours in the movie but I, in the series i played some character named uh i think her name is bridget where she's yeah. like asking for a letter and then like the letter goes wrong and she's just like yelling and then she starts crying about how she really did love the, the man <laughs> but yours yeah oh if you want to jump ahead oh god yours i okay when we were doing the movie i cried so much in our session just like every scene I was like this child is so precious I can't I can't take it uh yeah it was yeah that movie is beautiful and I love it and Eurus is is a special special child and I love him that is a one signature question I always like to ask uh, yeah if that's is that the most emotionally involved you've been for a role so far in anime? I, it, it might be. I'm trying to think. I mean, it, well, if you're talking about just like, like for your consideration, like sobbing, crying, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're talking about like for your consideration, like 
be, like like just emotionally dialed in like a hundred percent to a character, I'd say that's that's Novara. Right. Yeah. And I, I know that you've uh, probably been asked everything you could be asked about Novara, but uh, that's okay. You could ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main the main thing I was wondering was what the well, like most intense or darkest headspace you had to get get into for her. Oh sure. Well, um, it's the most like intense dark headspace is definitely like in episode twenty four. Yeah. Um, uh, when she's fighting the the two when she and Yuji are fighting the two brothers, and it's like it, that is the that is the point where she's at most cl- she's closest to death's door. You know, because they 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 poisoned them. Yeah. Uh, this curse is 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 like guaranteed to kill them right and she like looks deep in herself and she's like you know what no i'm gonna use this i'm gonna use it and i'm gonna turn it back on you and the fact that she could she could have the presence of mind to to remember to know that like oh my 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 technique is such that i can do this and just start driving nails into herself as using herself as the as the medium for resonance like that but the sort of like recklessness and, and just like drive to, to 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 win at all costs i was like oh that's so cool and so badass and like to be able for me as an actor to like go there a little bit with her was just ah oh, it was cool like mm-hmm. yeah that was it was yeah, that's one of my favorite that was one of my favorite like experiences like recording an anime so far 100 yeah. percent. do you have a particular process when it comes to getting into a like more intense dark headspace in general for voiceover stuff? Uh, I, I think for me, it, it's really just like having done the, the the work beforehand of like warming up and being like ready and in that space to like really kind of uh, dial into what's happening on the screen and then accept it and kind of like filter it through. So like being in the right, it's really just about being ready and prepared yep. to to channel all that through. Mm-hmm. Uh, this would is going back in order, but uh, yeah, with fine. the... Uh, God, Godzilla series. Oh, the Godzilla series was fun. My character, uh, Lee, she was Exposition City, right? Like, <laughs> she was just going to explain everything to you. And I swear, I had to say more complicated words in that show than I have in a long, long time. And I I laughed so hard whenever when I had to say, uh, oh, God, what was it? Orthogonal diagonalizer. I was like, what is oh God, this yeah. word? <laughs> we laughed about that for a good two or three minutes in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she, it's it's cool. Like playing women who, again, like this is a woman who's who's uh in charge. Like she is so sure of herself. I, I love getting to play women who are like that, who who are uh large and in charge, if you will. All right, yeah. And I know uh and a more unique series, uh, Penguin Highway. Oh, Penguin Highway was so sweet. I, I like, up until then, like, I never got to be cast. I, I rarely, rarely got cast as, like, little, like, young girls. And so, like, I was so, I was so, I was so happy when I got cast. I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> Not a mom. <laughs> um, but it's such a sweet, sweet movie, you know, just about, uh, like, children on that precipice, you know, growing up where you're about, it's like that weird place where you're about to lose your innocence. Right. And like, mm-hmm. and then having this like fantastical thing happen to you where it's, it's when you're right on that, on that, like razor's edge of like kind of tipping over into adulthood, like that's such a cool concept. And like being able to like kind of hold on to that, that, that innocence and that, that, <laughs> that joie de vivre. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought the movie was really neat um really like I thought the animation was gorgeous in it too mm-hmm. um yeah I liked it and that is uh, another interesting topic that I thought of uh, I know most like more recently that you got to start doing kid voices for yeah too. um I always like to ask voice actresses that do boy voices in particular like what do you have a specific process for that or does it just depend on what the character is yeah it's kind of just like depending on what the character is I mean, generally, like for when women do boy voices, like the like the usual takes are like you know you want to put some texture in your voice, kind of make it a feel a little more rounded, like a little usually like a little more like body under it, if you will. And there's just kind of like getting in the mindset of like you know uh, like these little boys, like they're they're usually like usually the characters that I play that are little boys, they're like they're like scrappy little things. 
Mm-hmm. And so like having like that in, in, in the back of my mind uh, always helps kind of dial into the characters. I know, of course, the main one is uh, Uzuki in High Rise. Oh, Uzuki! What a sweet child! <laughs> <laughs> and I like I, I jumped into that last minute because I, I don't remember who the original actress was, but there was another actress who was uh, already supposed to play Uzuki, but uh, there was like some like scheduling or technical problem and like she wasn't able to do it so then um oh. like I got a last minute call to jump in and fill in um which is great because he was such a he's such a sweetie he's such a sweet boy in the midst of like all this like terrible terribleness in that right. world <laughs> other more popular characters as a uh, Lola oh yeah Lola in the hidden dungeon I was like oh it's my first harem anime okay <laughs> that's a thing uh no I, I i liked lola because she she was sassy she was she was sassy and she could like give it back well you know also having her hair of moments <laughs> <laughs> and kind of similar with the uh, rosalie too oh yeah rosalie i liked rosalie because she's like when I when I started doing when I when I got the role of Rosalie and I saw like the I watched like the her first episode in the set, I was like, oh, she's got kind of a Nobara vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Like at, at first she's got a more Nobara Nobara vibe. And then it kind of like like lightens up when she like really joins the joins the group. But it's like it's such a sweet anime. Um, I was like, it's all ladies. They're just so cute. Mm-hmm. This was a on camera role. I was curious what your experience was on station 19. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, you know, after like being out here for so long, like I hadn't booked a co-star yet. And then I finally booked a co-star on station 19 and I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And I actually have a friend who's a, a costumer and she used to work on station 19, oh. like, uh, like the last, like the season prior. And I was like, oh, we could have worked together. And then I didn't realize until I was like, I think I was like in my fitting or something, but like a girl I went to undergrad with, was like a, a supporting character on the show. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh. we're like on a show together. We weren't yeah. even in a scene together, but I was like, that's so cool. Like what a small world, uh, but everyone was super nice. And it was interesting because I did that in, I think April, did I do that in April? March or April. And you know, like po- uh, COVID protocols were still, are still like, you know, yeah. going strong, right? So there, it was weird because there was, Everyone was super nice, but also everyone had to kind of stay apart. But uh, the, you know, whatever limited interaction I had with everyone on set was, was really cool. And like seeing how, how, how that side of the industry works, like was really cool. So do you still uh, actively try to pursue on camera work too then? Yeah. Like I have, you know, I have, I have a manager and I have a commercial agent. Like I, I did a, I shot a commercial like a couple months ago. Um, You know, I, 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 I like doing all the things, so (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> i leave myself open to all the opportunities so i know one of your like really more super recent anime roles was in the uh to your eternity <gasps> oh yeah to your eternity that oh that's a tearjerker mm-hmm. oh man yeah and you know and i played tonari who when you first meet her like wait can i curse <laughs> yeah it's fine <laughs> <laughs> she's such a little shit <laughs> <laughs> she's such a little shit and like I'm, I'm i'm recording and i'm just like i'm like uh and michael so rich was my was our director who was also the director well, uh, one of the directors on jjk and i was like michael she's such a shit <laughs> what is this girl she's so she's so bad uh but no and, and you know she has her reasons for for why she does you know things that are morally gray or even mm-hmm. you know sort of reprehensible but like the the fact that like you had this the thing about that show is that like he he makes these connections only to like like lose them and, he, and it's, it's only in losing those connections that he can grow just knowing that like every time you meet a character on the show you're like oh i'm gonna like you and then i'm gonna lose you and then it's gonna hurt yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so playing tenari i was the whole time i was like when when's it happening for tenari when's it happening for tenari <laughs> But uh, I mean, uh, spoilers if you haven't watched uh, To Your Eternity yet, like she makes it. <laughs> she makes it and I was like, yes, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for now, I mean, who knows if she comes back. 
And regardless of like what the role is or how uh, emotionally involved it is, do you always find something that you can personally relate to in the character or does it oh, really depend? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I think that's that's super helpful. Probably like with the exception of like insanely evil characters. But mm -hmm. even then, like you can always tap into the, like a, oh, you know, when you're doing something bad and it like feels good and you can relish in that, like, you know, if, if it's just like, you know, you cheated on a game, you know what I mean? That kind of a thing. Uh, you can always tap into even that, even if it's just like a little like 1% of what a character is feeling like. That's something you can tap into and use. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like for Tanara, there's, 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 there's enough in there for me to, to, um, to tap into. <laughs> so what is what is like the most recent anime you can like safely talk about or oh, yeah 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 uh just recently last week uh crunchyroll announced their dub lineup for the next season and uh i was cast in a really great show called sakugan okay, um, yeah. it's based on a, a japanese novel but it's a, a father-daughter story and i get to play the the daughter i get to play the little girl in the show memempu and uh Oh my gosh, I, I'm so hyped for this show because like, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so well written. The comedy is on point. Like, it's such a fun show to record because I'm just, I'm just, I'm yelling and I'm like doing all these cool, fun, fun, like Pratt Folly sounds. Like, uh, I, I love doing that stuff. And, and then, and then also like, it's got an emotional core and like the father daughter relationship their their bond is so strong even though they're always they're very much like an odd couple type but at the end of the day like they love each other and they love each other dearly and they will go to they will go to the ends of the earth for each other which is cool it's cool to see so i'm excited for when the dub drops because uh i'm like i'm really proud of this one <laughs> okay, yeah that's cool <laughs> So uh, with with uh, Genshin, how was the story of um, how you first got involved? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I got an audition from my agent. And, and I had auditioned a couple of times before for Genshin. But this one, this came in like a packet. They were like, oh, we've got new characters for this project, which turned out to be Genshin. Uh, they had a, a code name, but like you can kind of figure it out <laughs> if you're paying, if, if, if you, if you, if you're paying attention, it, it, it ended up, those were all the Inazuma women. So mm -hmm. I was auditioning for all the Inazuma women and, uh, I auditioned for all of them <laughs> except for, for the one that ended up being Sayu only because I forgot that it was in the packet. Oh. And when I realized after, the, after, uh, after the audition, after I sent in the audition, like a day or two later, I was just like cleaning up stuff and I found the, the PDF for Sayu just sitting in like one of my folders and I was like, did I forget to do that audition? The sleepy ninja? No, how could I forget? No. <laughs> uh, but no, but, but it's fine. Cause it turned out just great in the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like I, uh, like a, a couple of weeks later, I, I got an email saying, oh, you've been casting Genshin. And I was like, great, awesome. I booked something. And they were like, character, Raiden Shogun. And I was like, that name wasn't in any of the packet. Okay, well, which one was it? And so I just was like, well, maybe maybe she's been mentioned in the game before. And I was like, so I just Googled Genshin Impact, Raiden Shogun. And then like all this stuff came up because obviously she'd been talked about in the game before. And I was like, ah, I'm an Archon. I've booked an Archon. Oh my gosh. I freaked out. <laughs> The audition were asked you to have to do to do lines for both both voices, if you will. Um, so, and, and what I use in the audition is is like the base of what ended up being the Raiden Shogun, but like it it evolved a little bit um, when we got into session. Yeah, that was one of the uh, questions that a lot of people asked: if there if there was any um, difficulty on handling the multi facets of her. Yeah. So um, what's great is that when we were in our recording sessions, um, they had me do all of the Red and Shogun lines first. So we did a we took a couple of sessions. It was like, oh, man, 10 or 12 hours worth to get through all of Red and Shogun's lines, the puppet. And then the next the next few sessions after that uh, to do A's lines. Oh, but the very first session, my very first session was just NPCs. So like I'm also six NPCs in Inazuma. Did you immediately find any aspects that you could uh, personally relate to her with? Oh yeah, well especially like well with A in particular, you know, uh, like I 
I also love desserts. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think I, I, I relate to uh, what I relate to in the writing Shogun is just that like you, you you've got a person who 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 feels the response who could feel responsibility for for stuff but also at the same time um when stuff gets hard withdraw she literally withdraws into herself like yeah. this is literally what she does she withdraws in herself and like i i actually like i'm kind of like that too like when stuff gets hard i kind of just like shut off and just like okay go away but you know in that way i was like oh yeah i feel that i feel that hard um, but getting to play and even getting to play the puppet is fun because dude, when I first saw that cutscene uh in my first Raiden Shogun session, uh just the the, the cutscene from 2.0, yeah. uh where she pulls the sword, I was like, oh, this is rad. I get to do I get to <laughs> voice this woman. That's so cool. That's so cool. I love voicing women who are like, like I said, large and in charge. And she you can't get more large and in charge than the Electro Archon, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the single highest rated comment or question was um if there was a default line that you had to get into character as it started going on to keep us on track because the right it because the puppet the right in shogun puppet's voice is really specific and the hardest thing was th th that mihoyo wanted her to sound not robotic yeah right she's she's not a robot but she's also not emotional, right? And she's also cold. So it's like, ooh, how do you sound cold and unemotional, but not robot per se? Yeah. Um, and then also uh, from my initial audition, they wanted her to sound a little younger. So it was it was that and then not sounding too mature. Okay. Uh, so those were kind of like the things I was juggling. So when we were in our first session, uh, for each voice, we would... Um, kind of say a couple of the first lines whatever was on the spreadsheet and then uh they would record it and once we hit whatever felt like this is the voice print this is this is right for her uh that's what we would keep coming back to periodically uh as we kept recording to make sure oh are we still on track are we still kind of like in that sweet spot with with Red and Shogun so yes and I have oh gosh what was it exceptions the enemy of eternity that one I think it's that line and maybe you will be inlaid upon the statue? Maybe. Mm. But yeah, those two kept kept getting played in my ears. <laughs> Another one, well, you kind of already answered it, but somebody asked uh, what your what your mindset is while doing her voice. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, for, yeah. So for Red and Shogun, it's 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 cold, unemotional per se, uh, but not a robot. And then uh also because she's she's a leader, right? So I I, I gave her a voice that sounded regal mm -hmm. so it's it's sort of like uh the mid-atlantic accent so like i'm from the midwest so like all of my vowels are like wide and flat <laughs> but i also have lived in california for long enough that it's also a really lazy california drawl so for riding shogun it's um like proper so like all the vowels have like the proper rounded sound it's it's almost like a light british basically to make her sound sound like a queen sound like a queen uh from nowhere in particular if that makes sense uh <laughs> and then when i did a's voice similar kind of like uh that similar uh like vowel sounds and all that stuff but her her tone is is lighter she obviously has more expression in her voice, a little more musicality. She's faster. Her cadence is a little more like mine, uh, as opposed to the Raiden Shogun is a lot more uh, measured. A lot of the um, she, the Raiden Shogun hits all the operative words. Everything is deliberate. But if that makes sense, that, that's yeah. kind of like the two approaches I gave to the two aspects of her. And were you, did you ever... Uh take any reference from the Japanese performance or any other performances with it? Or? Yeah, so whenever we were doing the cutscenes, um, what I heard uh, was Chinese. So the Chinese okay. is the is the original. Uh, so I had the Chinese reference. I had the Chinese reference whenever we were doing the cutscene. So I was hearing her voice in my head. So that's that's obviously in there as well. Um, uh, and I, and I've, I've listened to, I've, I've, I found a video on YouTube that had all the other three uh, actresses, uh, the Chinese, the Japanese actress, uh, and the Korean actress. And God, and like, it was really cool to hear how they're different, but also like the core is still the same, yeah. you know, it's like, oh yeah, like that's, that's so cool to hear like 
slight variations on a theme and they're all so good. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have a personal favorite line of hers? I get asked that a lot. Um, and it changed, <laughs> it changes a lot because, you know, next time I will strike twice is actually one of my favorites. And I keep forgetting about that one. Um, the desserts line is one of my favorites. Uh, one of my new favorites from, from doing all these, for, I've been, I've been sending autographs, but, um, sending prints. Uh, one of my new favorites is, uh, all the world holds dear is uh, all the world holds dear is but a backdrop of constant motion. I stand before it alone and unchanging. That's one of yeah. my favorites. And then I have two favorites that are kind of like, kind of require context. One is from inside the story quest, uh, when she's reading the light novels and she's talking about the titles, she's just like, it's so long. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Uh, the whole light novel, uh, little bit is, it was the funniest thing to me. And then my other like super favorite line is, um, about Arataki Ito. Who? <laughs> <laughs> because that's just so silly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, those are, I think, generally my favorites, but she, there's, uh, the writing for her is so cool. Like she has such, she has so many cool things to say. A few people said, uh, like that they just switched the voice to English so specifically to hear your voice. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everybody who loves my performance. I, <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> Let's see. And what is your favorite, uh, character interaction? she really only interacts with either the traveler or yai right mm -hmm. like that's, that's basically it i don't think you ever see her when she meets yai back in the plane of youth i it's like oh old friends like oh my gosh you guys love each other oh be friends again please be mm -hmm. friends again <laughs> and then you know the traveler they they go on a date they go on a date throughout inazuma city i mean that's so sweet that the traveler teaches are about uh about light novels and <laughs> selfies <Yep>. and <laughs> <laughs> oh but one of my favorite uh, but but two my other two favorite moments with her are um the cut scene where she uh like oh it's what is it it's the cut scene where she like comes after the player and then kazuha like, rushes forward and like counters the Muso no Hitotachi and yeah. then uh and then Tomo's uh um vision lights up and you get like double double vision power and I was like <gasps> when I saw that cutscene I like freaked out in our yeah. session I was like oh my god oh my god he's got two two he's working too <laughs> <laughs> like that was so cool so so cool um and then um just like anytime you watch the Ride in the Shogun fight like She's like, her movements are so fluid. She's so badass. Um, now I'm just like gushing about the Red and Shogun. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you main her then when you play the game? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in my main team for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I currently usually roll with Ayaka, Singcho, and Yenfei. Okay. Um, but I did just get Toma and. Raiden Shogun is strong, but she needs a, she needs some shields. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he might be he might be joining the party soon after I level him up. It's gonna take a minute though. When I did interview a uh, Christian, uh, somebody also had this question: if there is uh, any particular advice you would give to um, other people of like Asian descent that want to get into voice acting specifically. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean. Well, voice acting is acting, so yeah. take acting classes, you know, or or study acting. However that is that you can, like, you know, you don't have to go to grad school and get an MFA like me. That is very expensive. I don't recommend <laughs> that for everybody. It, it took me 10 whole years to pay off my student loans. Take acting classes, um, you know, take, uh, learn, like, it's a craft and you have to learn how to do it because it's not just acting, it's also voice acting. So there is a specific, like, specific technique to it. So taking classes, getting to know people who are, who, who do it. If it's that, like, if it's uh, getting into like a practice group or something like that, that's also helpful. Um, one thing that I, one piece of advice that stuck with me is that like um, a, a really bad impression can become a really good character for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like if you're, you know, if you're, if you're, trying to mimic if you're trying to mimic the Raiden Shogun 
you know, just do a bunch of Raiden Shogun lines and whatever comes out, like that might be useful for another character that you that you develop down the line. For any any character that's put out, like your interpretation of it is valid, right? Mm-hmm. It just may not be the interpretation that gets chosen, gets hired, but your interpretation for the, for the most part is valid. And uh you should you should celebrate what makes you you. Like especially for Christian, you know, like Toma is a lot of just him in right. it. That's so like right. what makes Christian Christian is what makes Toma Toma, you know? And for me, like with Raiden Shogun, yeah, it's a voice. It's a voice that's put on, but there is a lot of me in there, especially with A. There's a lot of me in A, um, if not specifically vocally. Um, and so it's it's my cadences, it's my rhythms. It's it's the way I the way I emote, like that's, that's all in there. And so going back to acting, learning how to, process your own emotions and being able to put, like channel that through a line you know that's so important and using what makes you you really makes you stand out and makes that character stand out and that includes the fact that you know the, for the people who ask that we are asian you know you know if that's uh being able to draw on our experiences growing up you know in asian families or if a character calls for an accent being able to put on uh, you know an accent that is uh relevant to your upbringing is also good it's not necessary i'd say <laughs> i'd say i i rarely use that accent um but it's there it's there if i want to use it everything that makes up you is 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 useful is is fodder for the characters that you want to you want to create so yeah Embrace that. Use it. Mm-hmm. Use it. Somebody asked, what do you hope to see in the future for her character as far as uh, storyline and lore? Is for Raiden Shogun? I want her to get out. She should touch grass more. No, she should, <laughs> she should, she should make friends more. I, I think, I, I think that's the, that's, that's what I, I just, I want to see her move past this, this thing that she's in. Like she's obviously still working through stuff right she's got a a lot of grief a lot of grief to process and you know i I think once she's done when she's not done but like once she's in a place where she can she can move forward with it i'm excited to see i'm excited to see what she decides to do because i think she's learned a lot from the story quest about how the world keeps moving and that is okay. And there's so much to cherish about the world as it keeps moving. I think we haven't, I know, I, I, I not I know, I don't know. I think we haven't seen the last of her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on, on the topic of differences between you and her and like how, with how involved um, the different facets are, was any uh, recording process more, more uh, difficult because of that? No, I mean, it, for, with, with actors, like, you know, even if you don't necessarily, like, even if you don't, or aren't necessarily exactly like the character, the, the, the magical if, you know, the, the what yeah. if, you know, is, is the thing that you can drop on, like, okay, well, what if I was, what if I was a, a thousand, thousands of years old woman who's lost her, her dearest person and decided to retreat into her own sword to uh, reflect upon eternity and take everybody's visions? What would, what would I do? What would I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a lot about imagination, right? But, uh, but more, but you know, that's, that said, you can take you can take that like very long and complicated statement and say, well, what if I'm still in the process of grieving, and then someone has kind of barged in and is demanding that I, you know, kind of change up what I'm doing while I'm still in the process of grieving? Like, mm-hmm. what do I do then? You know, it's hard to identify with specifics, but it's easy to uh, to take bits and parts of those specifics and uh, not generalize it, but relate it to your to relate it to yourself. If yeah. you if you can if you can take those things apart um, and find at least one thing that you can kind of gleam onto. One some one question that someone said just a little before this was the one line that like really stuck out to them was the "I am no longer the shadow." Oh yeah! Oh, that's one of my favorites. That's why that's why I commissioned um, one of my prints was I wanted to have her like like the two sides of her like yeah. one in shadow and one not in shadow. I love that idea that like she, she, she's forced into that, right? Like, because she, she put herself in the shadow. She was the Kagemusha. She has nowhere to, re- not retreat to, but like, it, it's all her now. 
And so there's, there's a bit of like uh, reluctance, but there's also a bit of like, well, I, I have to do the thing that I have to do. So now I'm in charge and that kind of like determination in the face of like the great loss is um, it's touching. I think that's a lot. I think that's most everything that was covered. Uh, do you have anything that you want to say to the ride in sub? So the ride in mains. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys for all your support. Um, I, I will admit I, I haven't, I, I haven't really like, uh, done a lot of Reddit. So, <laughs> but I, I, I love that you guys are there. I love that you made her, uh, please keep maining her. I love her so much. And, uh, and I heart you guys for all your support. <laughs> <laughs> That's so the way that I, uh, the way that I end every interview, interview I do is asking, what do you want your legacy to be? What do I want my legacy to be? Whoa. I want to, I want to, I want my legacy to be like, to be just that, like, that I, I had fun doing all the characters that I did. Um, and that I did a lot of really cool and different and interesting characters. Mm -hmm. Has there been uh, like multiple cases with uh, Novara or, or whoever else that um, like fan messages that you've gotten saying that they've helped them in some specific Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Um, no, I've got, I've gotten a few really lovely messages from people who, who feel like Nobara's core message of, you know, not wanting to, uh, ascribe to, uh, the patriarchy, <laughs> uh, you know, really touches them and it touched, it touched me too. And, um, and I love, I love that for us that we can share, that we can, we can all share in that moment together because, she is aspirational. I aspire to be just like her. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. I'm glad that we got to do this. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I was really surprised. I mean, certain characters I have huge followings, but that one, I mean, has like 55,000 people. Oh it's my pretty... gosh. Okay, I should come. I should definitely come lurk in the right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye.